All right, so welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, in this session, we're going to introduce the UI pattern module. It's uh, a way to organize and use UI uh, atomic components, basically in Drupal 8. So uh, first, a uh, couple of slides about, uh, about us. So um, uh, we are Nuvole. It's a, a distributed web de development company uh, at present in these three countries, in Italy, Belgium, Czech Republic. I live in Belgium, and uh, Fabian here in front is, lives in Czech Republic, being from Switzerland. So, Our clients are usually um, international organizations. And uh, why is this relevant to this presentation is because, um, well, some of the big uh, international organizations we work with, they like to have like a different uh, um, um, like, uh, part of their team working only on the presentation layer, right? So they don't care that much about uh, which technology we are going to use at the end to implement the site or build or deploy any site. They just want to uh, deliver a consistent UI uh, language for the organization. So often we find ourselves uh, working with this kind of team that just produce uh, just a beautiful front-end uh, piece of work, and we just, they just ask us to integrate it. So here, uh, a good cooperation between uh, back-end and front-end is really, really essential. And this um, good cooperation also passes through um, like, uh, an optimized workflow, and UI patterns helps a bit in this as well. So atomic design and Drupal. Uh, why atomic design? Well, uh, atomic design is really uh, sets up a very good workflow for uh, integrating external um, libraries. Into, into any application, actually. Um, it allows to build uh, a consistent maintainable user interface language. It, by doing that, you also create like a living style guide or documentation at the end that uh, editors, uh, content editors can use when they edit their content. Um, and it streamlines, of course, the workflow between uh, uh, front-end and back-end developers. And uh, it makes the UI components reusable. So that's why Atomic Design is, get, is gaining momentum and is establishing as a, a way to work between front end and, uh, and back end. So uh, over time, uh, some um, popular component libraries has been establishing. For example, Fractal is one of those. It's uh, totally front end. Uh, there is nothing PHP here. Um, you might have heard uh, or use it. Uh, it's just a uh, good uh, component library. It, it helps you organize the components, um, present them into like an overview section and stuff like that. And the second one is Pattern Lab. Pattern Lab is more like PHP friendly, thanks to its extensions. Um, this is what uh, most of us in the Drupal environment, I believe, work with. So we have like it's the most supported of them all. And they pretty much offer the same kind of, uh, same kind of services, like, uh, like the Fractal one. All right, so um, what is uh, atomic design? Well, we can, use, uh, we can borrow this one from uh, Pattern Lab website. It's basically a way to organize your interface, right? So you start from the most atomic component, uh, the atoms, as they like to, to call them. So for example, the, the button, the search box, everything that is really atomic. And then you compose the atom, these atoms in something that uh, are like molecules, right? So different atoms together to build, for example, a search box. And this search box then finds its place into something more complex, so organism. So you go on until arri you're arriving at a template level and the pages level at the end. So you really build your, um, your UI language in this way. Now. Uh, what's the status of this in, uh, in Drupal 8? So we have several uh, options at the moment, a uh, very valid one. One is component libraries, um, components module. Uh, it allows you to expose um, components in, uh, in a way that Drupal knows about that, them, and you can easily load them into uh, your tweak templates using namespacing, basically. Yeah, tweak namespacing. Then you have more complex uh, solution, more comprehensive solution, if you, if you will, like Emulsify, for example, or uh, Starter Kit or Pattern Lab Starter. They all like um, uh, work with Pattern Lab, and they try to integrate Pattern Lab with, uh, uh, with Drupal to streamline, uh, to streamline your workflow. And they do a pretty good job at that. So uh, where Twig is about, like, what's, what's Twig state then uh, uh, when we talk about atomic design? Well, Twig aims at, at enhancing reusability already. So you already have stuff like include, extend, or embed. All this statement allows you anyway to structure your, 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 your workspace in a proper way. So you can do stuff like that, include template.twig with 
foo bar. So you, you can render the template.twig passing the value bar to the variable foo inside the template.twig. This is already uh, very good for usability. You can also extend um, other templates. For example, if you have blocks in one template, you can extend that uh, template and just change one of the blocks. So you have a sort of a inheritance that's a very powerful tool as well. The twig already gives us, uh, or the embed one, which is like a kind of combination of the two of them. So it, it's a really good tool for, for usability. But um, how then the twig reusability would look then, or looks in Drupal? Let's say, for example, we want to style uh, an article uh, from a view, we want to start it as a card. So we have this card component, right, in our, in our uh, pattern lab library, let's say, and we want to use it to style uh, an article from, from our view. So we would do something like that. Inside the twig template that is uh, exposed by views, we would import or include the um, card twig template. The at molecules is what pattern lab uses, so it's a way of loading um, it's a namespace loading for Twig, so it just goes and if you, if you have like at molecules, then you tell uh, Twig where to f get this, uh, this template and, and load it. And then you would pass just, uh, we would basically map the variables that are uh, available in the parent template, so the one of views, you would map them uh, into the uh, Twig template variables. Pretty easy, so just do a simple mapping. Now, what are the issues here? So, several issues. Well, f first thing, the card component itself cannot be preprocessed. So, Drupal does not have any knowledge about the card component, right? Because it's embedded inside a tweak template. Drupal knows about the views template. It knows very well how to handle that, but it doesn't know anything about the card template that you're eventually using it to style that tweak template. So, you kind of separate the two things, right? So you're kind of, you are kind of hard coding. Uh, the, the component, the UI component into Drupal. Um, you can load assets that are necessary for the card template to render correctly uh, by using an attach library function, which is a Drupal 8 uh, way of doing it, but then you are using Drupal inside your, your Twig template. And imagine if you, if you have like um, an external library built in Twig, but not necessarily for Drupal, then you cannot really do that. So you need to find other ways because that external library does not know about the Drupal specific function attached library that we are used to, to use. So, um, and uh, there is also a problem, a very important problem in Drupal 8, it's cache invalidation. So when you do that, you would have problem with cache. You might have problem with cache. Because the, the card itself does not know about Drupal object, does not pass cache invalidation, uh, does not bubble up cache invalidation, and so you might have also issues about this. All these issues are because Drupal is not aware that you're using the card template inside that parent use template, right? So you just start coding it there. So UI Patterns aims uh, at addressing these issues and a bit more as well. So it allows developers to define and expose self-contained UI components, but as Drupal 8 plugins. So it's a way really to make Drupal aware of your UI components, and exposing them as Drupal 8 plugins. Then uh, it allows our builders to reuse the components as uh, drop-in templates for panels, uh, field groups, views, display suites. So you uh, think about the mapping that you saw earlier. Um, it will give you, it will give site builders a UI to make this mapping much more, much easier. So at a configuration level, not fiddling with the, with the Twig template. This will reduce a lot your Twig templates that you need to use in order to integrate these components, of course, because it, it, it happens at a configuration level that site builders and developers can, can work with. Um, then since, uh, part, since components are exposed to Drupal 8, then Drupal 8 knows about them and knows to treat them properly so we can pre-process them, we can have theme suggestions, we can have um, pre-processes per context and stuff like that. And then, most importantly maybe, UI patterns does not really, is not meant, uh, does not mean to, to replace the existing solutions, but it wants to be a complementary uh, um, tool to those solutions. So it does not really replace, if you use uh, component libraries, for example, it works with component libraries actually. So you can use namespace that are provided you by component library inside your pattern definition, and it works pretty well with that. So what's the architecture overview of the, of the, of the module? So basically, um, here it is. Basically, you have like on the top, uh, the first layer are the UI components themselves, right? 
So these UI components are managed by um, your uh, pattern uh, library of choice. It can be Fractal, it can be Pattern Lab, it can be anything. It can be the YAML uh, UI pattern one, which we'll see in a moment. Then uh, this, um, the UI patterns then um, reads the, um, the pattern definition from these uh, template libraries and pass them to Drupal. So it makes, it turns basically that, uh, the, the, the UI components that are Drupal agnostic into Drupal plugins. So that Drupal knows them and knows how to process them. Okay, and then you pass that to, to the Drupal theme layer. So it's, it really is just a bridge between any kind of component library you might want to use and the Drupal world. That's what the main idea is. So here you have the different components again. This one is what is already bundled in. We'll see it in, in a minute. You can have several um, component libraries that provides uh, components to UI patterns. Interestingly enough, you can have more than one at the same time. So you don't have to choose one, but you can have several. For example, if you have Fractal as your main component library, but you still want to use atomic design for your uh, site-specific things, you can still use another one that you maintain. So you can have both. So you have like the main one that is maintained by another team and another one that is per project specific is maintained by you. So it allows you to do that as well. And then, the, yeah, basically it takes all this information and um, makes it consistent, turning it into plugins and pass it to Drupal. So how you define patterns? So patterns can be defined via YAML. This is one way of defining patterns. For the moment, it's the only one. But the architecture of, uh, the plugin architecture of UI patterns actually allows this to be uh, changeable. I mean, you can change it that you can define patterns pretty much in whichever language you want. But for the moment, it's YAML. Definition can be placed in, in, in files that are name of the pattern or name of the module or name of the theme dot UI patterns dot YAML. This can also be changed, right? So you can choose, if you don't, if you don't feel comfortable having UI underscore patterns, you can choose, you can, you can change that. And, where the patterns are depends from your discovery methods, so you're gonna, you're gonna need, you're gonna, you have a lot of options there. The patterns are converted into, into standard Drupal 8 render elements. This is pretty powerful, so when you, when you expose a, a component to UI patterns, this patterns becomes a render element for Drupal. So you can render the pattern by just using the, the standard render array type pattern. Then there you would pass ID of the pattern, the fields, and all the mapping. And this becomes really, really powerful because this makes it consistent with all the Drupal basically core. And it exposed then uh, patterns in the Drupal uh, theme system in the following way. So basically, given, um, yeah, given the media pattern ID, for example, right? You would have uh, the, the UI patterns will 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 um, will make made up, will make available a pattern media uh, function theme function, and it would expect the pattern media twig file to be there to be rendered. Of course, we are in Drupal, so all this is completely customizable. We don't want to impose a specific naming convention or a specific way of doing things. That's the, that's the point of it. So pattern definition are kind of flexible as well. I mean, they they can be become complex depending from your use case. If you just want to expose a pattern to the, to the UI pattern system, then you, maybe you're just inter interested in saying, okay, this is the hero pattern and these are its fields. So the image, the title, the subtitle, and the rest, I don't care. Or maybe you want to be a bit more verbose because maybe you want also to use those metadata as documentation so you can say, okay, the image uh, pattern as an image label, is label called image description maybe. So you can also have this kind of uh, more elaborate pattern definition. They're all compatible, basically. All right? They're all in YAML. One uh, pattern definition file can contain one or multiple uh, f definitions as well. And uh, the, the definition engine will understand which one you are using. Then uh, pattern template is the most uh, common thing that, that you ever seen so far. It's just a normal tweak template. So you just have the fields that you see here above pass through to the final template and then finally rendered. Right? So this is, for example, the hero pattern. Now, so the question is now, how is this better than simply using Twig, right? Because I, we didn't introduce anything new at this point. This is pretty much what Twig can do already. The answer is really the Drupal theme layer. So since patterns allow us to attach the metadata to Twig templates, then it passes this metadata information to Drupal theme layer, and Drupal theme layer can then uh, do a lot of things with this metadata. So really, pattern is a metadata engine. 
One of its functions is really that, attaching metadata information to templates which do not have such a thing at the moment. For example, just exposing which fields are the fields that the template is rendering. This is already a very important information, and if this is structured in a formal way, then the Drupal theme system can do something with it, right? So that's what pattern is, basically. So this is the first layer, first thing. Now, as I told you earlier, we are in Drupal world, so we have to be fully customizable because uh, every workflow is different, every you know, organization is different. So you can customize the definition by having extra uh, ID keys. So you can uh, change the, the theme hook. If you're not comfortable having pattern underscore ID, you can change that. Uh, you can change the template, of course. If you're not comfortable having pattern dash name of the like ID of the pattern, you can change that as well. Or, and this is the most powerful thing, you can use the use property when you define your patterns. This use property allows Tweak to load whichever pattern it's exposed to Tweak. And this uses Tweak uh, namespacing, right? So the at molecules or the at my module, these are like Tweak loading, loading mechanisms that are in core in Drupal 8. And here is where uh, it gets, for example, complementary to component library module because the component library module allows you to define this namespacing, right? So by doing that, you just, you can have both. You can have your own namespace for your own components and then you can pass this to pattern. So you can tell, instead of, instead of going and looking for the pattern dash hero dot HTML dot tweak, please use this template instead, which lives in my pattern lab library. So this is a way to um, integrate external libraries using the YAML uh, definition. People already done that, so it's already working. Then libraries can also be defined locally. So one, one of the things that we saw earlier, one of the limitations uh, was that you had to kind of um, code the, the library loading inside the template file, and you cannot always do that easily because maybe the template file is maintained not by your team, but not by a Drupal team, but by a fractal team, which is outside your team, so you cannot do that. Uh, so by doing this, you can actually attach libraries to your pattern, but not only that, you can define them also inside your pattern definition, so you don't have to maintain libraries in two places. You don't have to maintain libraries in the library.yaml thing, file, you can just have an atomic approach to define libraries as well, by defining them where you define the pattern, right? So you bundle all together in a really an atomic fashion inside that. Uh, the, the assets, that the libraries refers to can also be bundled in the same directory where the pattern is. So if you see there down below, you have the media.one.css, it's in the same subdirectory where the pattern is. So you can really glue them together and really have like an atomic uh, approach to this. Then, since patterns are exposed as render, um, render objects, basically render elements, you can render them easily like that, right? So you can just say type pattern. ID, the ID of the pattern. Fields, you just map your fields there. Of course, you can pass whatever renderable thing you want there, right? Because a field can accept a render array. So you can pass anything, you can pass blocks, you can pass anything you want. You are in the render array here. Um, what happens here is that um, the, at render time, uh, the, the render element object will load, uh, well, we'll ask the plugin system, give me the information about the black quote pattern, and then you will know which fields to, to use, and then it will map the fields, and it will finally render it. Then from here, the natural evolution is this one, right? So we want also to be able to do that inside uh, your twig, our Twig templates, why not? That's really easy at this point, because once it's a render, uh, it's a render element, so I just deal with render arrays, then I can, I can have this. So this is also supported. So inside your Twig templates, you can actually render the block quote or whatever pattern you want by just mapping, uh, by just mapping um, fields there. We use it also to, for layouting, for example. If you have very complex layout you want to reuse, sometimes we put this in the page.html, for example, just mapping stuff so we can have, uh, you know, uh, reuse parts of the layout as, as given by the external libraries. For example, the fractal team is working on a header. We just include a header and expose it as a pattern and then do this. And then, of course, since uh, Drupal theme knows about it, uh, then you can have uh, pattern suggestions, right? This depends on the context you use the pattern in. So it's, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, we will come to it a bit later, but this is just to say that you can have like different preprocesses depending on where the pattern is, um, is rendered. 
So if you render a pattern into a view, you will have a one preprocess function that you can call. If you render the same pattern into a node, then th there will be offered to you another preprocess function. So you can massage the data properly depending on where the pattern is, is used, basically. That's, that's, uh, that's very easy to do it with this architecture. Now, so far, we have just seen how UI pattern works. So it, just to recap, it provides, it turns every component into a Drupal plugin. By doing that, it allows Drupal to to use that as a render uh, element. So you can use render array, twig integration is very easy. Everything is cache aware, of course, because it's a render array and all that. Now, um, the point is that UI patterns really need a pattern library in order to function. So you need to have your patterns somewhere. But maybe you, you cannot or you don't want to use complex pattern solutions like Pattern Lab or Fractal for any reason. So because of this, the pattern, UI pattern modules actually ships with um, a component, a module called the uh, UI patterns library, which is this block here. So it's uh, bundled inside the UI patterns module and uh, expose your pattern, patterns from your modules and teams. It gives you uh, an overview page where you can just screen your patterns uh, and uh, showcase them. And it's really like a Pursman Fractal or Pattern Lab. So it's a very simple solution for having like a pattern library if you don't have or want or can use Fractal or Pattern Lab. So how, how does it, it uh, integrates with, uh, with, with UI patterns very easily? It just provides an extra, um, um, an extra property on the pattern definition object, which is a preview. Right? So this preview is basically tells you, uh, it tells the UI pattern system what content to use when you preview the pattern. So for example, here we are having like a block quote pattern. So you want to have like the preview of the quote is like this, this text here. And the preview of the attribution is Albert Einstein, for example. Then that's the pattern object. And this is what you see basically on your UI pattern uh, overview page. This is styled, of course. I mean, when you install the module, you just see a very basic, uh, uh, you know, blue thing. But then if you style, you can get to that kind of thing very pretty easily. So you see all the information is presented to you. You have the title, you have the description, you have the fields that uh, the pattern accepts. So it's pretty much a bit like what uh, Fractal or Pattern Lab do, but it's like just a simpler way, just to have something running, right? And then you also have a preview of the pattern itself using those content that you defined here in the, in the definition. So if you have a preview is that, then it uses this in the preview here. Now the preview property, it can be anything, can be anything renderable. So it can be a string or it can be itself a render element, right? Which means that we can pass patterns inside the preview as well. So if you have a pattern that is an image and you want to use that pattern as a preview for another pattern, then there is another render element array which is called pattern preview, which is very obvious what it does. It just take the preview pattern and then runs it, right? So if you have an image uh, as a pattern, then you can use the same pattern as a preview of the other of another element. So you really kind of compose them the same way really as you do with, with Fractal or, or Pattern Lab for that matters. So yeah, here you see the two examples. You can have either like, yeah, either an image, theme image, that's totally acceptable because it's like a render element or it can be type pattern preview ID image, and then it just renders the image. So it goes and fish the, fishes the image definition, takes out the data and renders it. Now, you can also organize patterns in subfolders with the UI pattern library. So this, is, this helps you to, um, to keep your, your, your pattern library like a, you know, clean and nice. Um, yeah, so here it is, for example, you have like the, the theme.uipatterns.yaml is here is where you define all your patterns or you can also have definition per directory. So it, both stuff works, so the, the system will just screen all the directory, uh, scan all of them, and then just take the, the definition out of it. So let's have a little demonstration now just, uh, just to see a bit how this one works in, in, in real life. All right, so let's go here. This is a site that I have set up, yep. Okay, so actually if you go on the module page on, uh, on the GitHub, there is a readme, and to do that is pretty easy. Mm, you are just have to do composer install and we build the site for you, this site, the site that uh, I, I myself use for uh, developing the module itself. So it's really, it's really easy to have this. So um, this is the, the pattern library uh, page, already styled, of course. So I use uh, Bootstrap because it's very easy to, to manipulate. So I just styled it just to, to be a bit nicer for the presentation. 
And then basically you can see in the demo theme, this is how the UI patterns.yaml looks like. So I have all my patterns defined here. So for example, the block quote as is a block quote with this description, the fields are the following. So you give the type, the label, the description, the preview, etc. The only mandatory field here is a label. The rest you can also skip. This is just for documentation, the type. I mean, so for example, the block quote is this one here, you see? So we have the information here. Now, um, patterns can also be, well, yeah, so then the block code pattern, for example, has this template here, very easy. So, yeah, simple as that. Then patterns can also be defined inside subdirectories, as, uh, as I said earlier. So, for example, a button pattern can be uh, defined inside the subdirectory next to the tweak template itself. So you can have a button like this description, then the fields title URL, and then that's basically the, the template for the button. Or the media, uh, media component, the same thing. So you can have um, the media component defined into the YAML file next to the media tweak file. You can attach libraries, as you can see here. These libraries are like fictional libraries, they're not actual libraries. They, they will be um, exposed by, by UI patterns. So you can bundle them all together here. And then, of course, the assets are also next to the template itself. So you can really keep it uh, well structured. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Ah, yeah, forgot something. What you can do also is, of course, to style the, the, the pattern page itself, so the, the overview page. So if you go here, then it's very easy to override this. So yeah, you have a meta information here, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you can style this kind of thing, you can adapt it to your theme, of course, and you can override the default one. Now, uh, sorry, uh, jumping a bit. Now, let's continue. So here it gets interesting. How do you expose your pattern via third-party library? So let's have a look like, I have fractal or pattern lab, how can I just use them? So this is the situation here. Uh, we want to in integrate external libraries. Um, this is pretty easy to do. There are a lot of people doing it already now. Uh, you just have to um, basically include inside the directory of your patterns a YAML file, and this will, uh, and then place this uh, the directory of your of your of your library inside your theme, and this will work. So pattern will uh, will uh, will uh, will basically detect them and expose you uh, to you this uh, this kind of patterns. But we can also have. Uh, but like a more advanced way of doing this. Imagine if you don't want to expose patterns with YAML files, for example, right? Or you want to use a different format. Maybe you have JSON, so you, all your metadata is already there, but it's in JSON, so you don't want to use YAML file, you don't want to convert that. You already have a place where your fields are defined, but it's in JSON because you're using Fractal. So you can do that, and you can do that because at the end, what pattern really are, are just plugins. So each pattern, each component is a plugin. So to, you, can de, you could define each component manually by creating, actually creating a classes, one class per, per pattern. Or better, you can ask a driver class to do that for you. That's how Drupal 8 plugin system works. So um, how it works. So first of all, you need to provide a new custom um, pattern plugin, and it's very easy. Just this class, you don't have to do anything. Just extend the pattern base class, add the annotation with the ID, of the pattern, and then uh, the driver, the, 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 the class that you want to use as a driver. So just an empty class for the moment. You can, of course, override methods from the base class, etc. Then you have to provide a custom uh, driver class, and the driver class just has to implement two methods, basically, get patterns and get file extensions. So imagine if you don't want to have the YAML files, or you want to have another, you want JSON, for example, or you want another extension, you can do that there. This will scan directories. For the moment, we are, we are just um, um, extending the abstract YAML pattern driver, which is the same driver that the pattern library module uses, right? But that's just as, a, as an example. You can also remove that class, make your own driver, and just really provide uh, your own parsing methods and stuff. And then get patterns. Get patterns will need to build uh, pattern definition objects. So as, uh, as soon as you return from the get pattern methods an array of pattern definition objects, then all the pattern system can take over and it, it will all work. So let's have a look at this. Um, yeah, I have it on the other side here. For example, have a look at this one. 
this does not look like anything Drupal, I guess. So you have just a twig file, right? With just a small twig file here. Then you have your assets here, the CSS and JS. The button is the same. And then you want to just use YAML. So not, no UI pattern, nothing. Just YAML file to describe your, 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 your components. You can do that. This thing is uh, pretty, Drupal, pretty much Drupal independent, apart from this that, of course, is Drupal dependent. Uh, if I had more time before the presentation, I would have done also that, but I didn't have time. So you can actually swap that as well, remove the use, and uh, build a full uh, driver that actually parses whatever location in the disk you have or anything. For the moment, just to, for a quick example, just to reuse the YAML driver. So that one is necessary. But you can also remove it, right? You can have that in any, in any way you want. Then the only, only thing you have to do is the custom pattern here. So that's how you implement a new pattern plugin. And then that's where the magic happens, the driver. So for the moment, this driver just scans these directory templates where the patterns are and creates this object here, pattern definition. From that moment on, the pattern, UI pattern system takes over and you can have everything from now on. You can have the mapping, you can have the rendering as a render element, etc. And then, yeah, get file extension. It tells you which, where, which extension you want to use, but okay. That's pretty much, uh, pretty much it. All right, so, yeah, so then once you do that, then you have uh, this kind of thing. So you can really go on your content, for example, the title here, it's an article. If you go manage display, yeah, that's, you can see your patterns here as a layout. This actually brings us to the next topic, which is how you actually use this uh, with Drupal, right? Because until now we've just been defining patterns. But apart from being able of uh, being able to uh, render them into um, tweak templates or, or render elements, we didn't do much with that. But where actually is getting interesting is then is this part here. So once these once patterns are plugins, so they are uh, Drupal is aware of them, then we can have integration modules, and this is the interesting part because then. You can now turn patterns into layouts, into view, styles, plugin, into display suites, plugins, uh, field groups, anything, right? And from this point on, it's just about mapping. The only thing that we have to do here is just about mapping source data to destination fields in the pattern. So we have, for the moment, four modules that are bundled inside the UI patterns module which will probably change in the future because I would like to explode that and have one project per, per module, but okay, for the moment it's like this. So if you download the UI patterns module, you find all of them bundled together. And uh, how does this work? We have another plugin that UI patterns module uh, exposes. It's called the source field plugin. So the source field plugin, what it does is that it, un it understands the context where the pattern is used and it provides you with source fields. For example, if you use a pattern in views, it would understand in which view you are using this pattern, if, um, get the fields of that view, and pro give, um, provide those fields to you for just an easy mapping to the destination fields. Same for, um, for, con for display suites or any other things. So basically, the source field can be mapped to pattern destination fields. They are context dependent, so they, they really are aware of a the context they are executed in. And they, have, they, are, they are extensible because they are, it's just another plugin type. So you can provide your own source field plugins to have like your own map field sources. If you want to expose blocks, for example, to patterns, you can do that very easy. Then you can just implement uh, a source plugin. For example, this is how the, the view source plugin works. So you just have, again, a plugin definition, view row. Uh, some information there, and then the only method that the, that the plugin implements is just to get source fields, right? So, let's have a look now how this actually works. Uh, we go back on this side here, yep, and we check that. So we are gonna we are gonna see the different things. So, first of all, uh, we are gonna see. Well, we, we want to style the, an article with some metadata information. For example, the, the author. Uh, creation time, update time, and then some tags. And for that, we want to use uh, we want to use this pattern here. Let's go and check it out. 
the metadata pattern. We want to use this pattern here, right? So we want to use this one, we want to just use this template dropped in our, our node uh, rendering thing and just use the author, just meet, publication date, and then categories. That's all we want to do. Okay, so to do that, it's pretty easy. Because uh, of the UI patterns, the uh, DS module, it exposes the source uh, fields plugin for display suite, so we can do the following thing. You can go and manage display. Okay, so you see here metadata, this is actually a field group, so it's another module, a field group uh, uh, module. If you click on the settings here, you have the metadata here. These are, these are basically the patterns that are exposed to UI patterns. You can see here the plugins, the field source plugin that are available in that context, in the context of a field group. There are fields plugin, display suite plugin, so these one are display fields, display suite fields, these one are the actual node fields. And you can just have a simple mapping. So I want the tag to be, come, to, to be uh, injected into my categories. You want the post date to go in publication date, the last modified date, also publication date, and the author in the author field. So this becomes basically the following thing here. Right, you see? If we change, so the, the full render field is really injected into the, into the pattern directory, so you didn't have to touch any template. You just use this pattern and, 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 and it's done. We can also, for example, add the labels to the last modified fields, for example, the post date of the last modified. We add the labels here. If you refresh, you can see the labels appearing there as well. So the field is really rendered with all this format. What we want to do now in the next iteration of the module is having having settings per mapping, so per source field plugin. So, when I, so that when I go here, each one of them will have settings here, so a little gear icon that you can really set what you are gonna map. These settings will be depending from the, for, from the source plugin system. It's quite powerful because, for example, imagine about uh, having a, a, a token source uh, field plugin. So you can like inject tokens inside the pattern areas, pattern fields. So you can get pretty, pretty advanced, or, or blocks, or anything like that. Um, so this is one thing. Then we also have other parts of the nodes are actually styled using patterns. For example, this is a, this is a, this is a paragraph factory, right? So if you go here, we edit the node, you can see here a little paragraph. See, the Jumbotron paragraph. So I styled this, this with a Jumbotron uh, component, and where I did, I did that, so if you go on paragraph type, and then you check the mesh display. Here you see that patterns are also exposed as layouts. So you can use them as layouts for your panel pages, for your anything that supports the layout discovery module is also working with patterns. See here, select a layout, all your patterns are available as layouts as well. So you just map the fields, you put the title into the title field of the pattern, you put this, the subtitle of the, of the paragraph into the subtitle field of the pattern, and the result is, is just what you expect. Basically, this. And the same is for buttons, for example, right? So imagine this typical uh, example is I want a link field to become a button, right? So I, how do I do that? Well, again, since we can just go here on the links fields, and then we choose a pattern field template, and you get the same interface. You can map components of the field the link field to destinations. Since this is at the link field level, so the field level, you get other sources here. You see? So you can map the links URL into the URL and the title into the label. And then you get basically the, um, the path that you're styled nicely here. Same you can do for views, of course. So if you go on the articles, you can get this view. And this one, again, is yet another uh, very easy integration, so you have like the pattern uh, raw display plugin, and here is the same thing. So media object, you just get the same stuff. So you can map fields of the view into the pattern thing, right? And then you have it just st styled, everything, everything is loaded. Think that when that happens, so all the libraries that you defined are, are loaded, everything is like bundled together, and you are sure that you are really rendering that without any extra markup, basically. All right, so. That's it. Uh, yeah, I think we covered everything. All right, so uh, what's the future of UI patterns? So basically, we had, we had some very courageous early adopters, and I want to thank them, because they were really, really great in testing the module. 
Um, we got a lot of feedback. People start to use the module in a really crazy way, which is a very good sign, I think. But it also calls from a responsibility from our side as maintainers to make the core smaller and more flexible than, than possible. Because um, I want to make it like really, really smaller core so that uh, our own responsibility would be to just have the, the patterns working uh, as a plugin system, basically, and then all the rest is then uh, delegated to, to contribute work. So I want also to explode the, the main, uh, main uh, module into separate um, sub-modules, because this also will incre increase maintainability. For example, if you have an issue with a field group module, that blocks only the UI pattern field group module, then it does not, is not a problem for all the, the projects, but just for that sub-project. Uh, we want also to have a more extendable pattern definition, so to make pattern definition more flexible so that you can add your own values in the pattern definition, so you can have, I don't know, an extra field, uh, extra information that you need for your own uh, business domain. Field mapping settings as well, so as, as, as I told you earlier, when we map, we want to have their settings for each mapping, so that things like variant subfields, multiple fields can be provided as separate modules. So we don't need to take care of that. So that's the direction that uh, that we are giving to the module. The module is currently in RC1, uh, so uh, we want to tag 1.0 soon enough. Uh, then we we'll see if we do that before or after the explosion with all the, the modules. Uh, we'll see. But anyway, one last thing. So this is just food for thoughts. Basically, what we have been doing until now is just like um, creating uh, a metadata system, so describing a way of formally describing our uh, templates. That's, that's all it is, really. All the effort that we do in, are in this direction. So component libraries uh, like Flutter, Pattern Lab, um, the component library module, our module, they all aim at the same direction of describing what a piece of presentation logic does. That's all that there is to it. So we are wondering if uh, not to have then just a separate component that is not really even a Drupal component, which would be called, <clears throat> for example, a Twig uh, annotation. So why don't we use annotation in Twig? And then we describe what the Twig template does, and then the UI patterns can just load this information from within the template itself, and then just do whatever it wants to do. And then, of course, from here, the next natural step is why do we still need the hook theme function if we can do this, right? If every template can describe itself, then we don't need a hook theme anymore. We just we can do that. But that just is just like food for thoughts, really. We want to play a bit with this stuff, maybe having just like a completely independent component that just parse twig and returns annotation. I just use the annotation format that we are all familiar with, of course. I mean, there are two levels of comments there, of course, but that's just because we are familiar to of seeing those annotations on top of classes, but that doesn't have to be that format, of course, when we do it for Twig. We can also use YAML or anything, I don't know. It will also serve purposes of uh, documentation of the, of the template. So maybe it's also, this will uh, increase adoption from non-Drupal uh, ecosystems as well, why not? So that's really just, uh, you know, think about it. I, I think it can be a nice direction also for the future, and so we get rid of the hook theme finally. Now, UiPaths ecosystem, I want to thank all these incredible contributors that just used the modules and uh, got really excited about it and then just started creating foundation patterns that integrates the Zoop foundation with UI patterns so you just get uh, up and running. Uh, we ourselves have, have also a little theme that does it with Bootstrap uh, component combo, the Sheila Drupal theme, it was one of the first adopters. So uh, big thanks to all these guys, really great community. So how to contribute to the module? Uh, basically, yeah, well, first of all, read the docs. So we are putting our effort of maintaining docs. It's very painful, but okay. So please read the doc first. Uh, then uh, if the issue is still there, if you cannot solve it, open an issue, clone from uh, the repository. Just run Composer install. This will create for you the build site that you can just use. Um, and uh, yeah file your pull request and, uh, on the Git repository. Then we also have two like, uh, real-time conversation spaces. One is uh, Gitter, so if you go on the GitHub page, just click on Gitter, you, yeah, you get it. And the other one is Slack. Uh, Drupal Twig Slack, we have a channel, UI Patterns. Um, yeah, we are all there, so if you want to join, please do that there. Uh, yeah, so these are uh, like organizational uh, 
um, information from DrupalCon. And that's it. Remember to leave uh, yeah, your feedback. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, if you have any questions, just please use the microphone so that we can record them. Yeah, this looks really awesome. Um, so one question, um, you have these fields, and so far what I understand is that every field is like, like a markup, a piece of markup. So uh, what if you want to have one field like an array or something, or maybe just a CSS class or something like that? So. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, so at a certain moment, uh, so how we use this? We, we do map with the UI, but then there is always a moment where we go with the preprocess and we just uh, massage the data before it's served to the, to the UI pattern, you see? So in case of those kind of things, you, like, you have to use uh, preprocessing. The preprocessing pre are quite nice because uh, as each pattern is aware of the context where it's rendered, so if I render a pattern, the same pattern, I render it into a view or into an entity display mode, display, uh, then we get different kind of preprocess uh, functions that are run. So you can massage data and then, uh, and then provide it. So you can preprocess also this kind of data, but it does not do it automatically, yes. I mean, if you have a pattern that displays a list of something, and the list items should be maybe field items or the yes. rows of a view, then this would be maybe a field, but the field would uh, require like an array of Yes, so if, if it's renderable, if it's something renderable, then you can pass it directly. But if it requires some manipulation, then you need to do it in the preprocess manually. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, we, can, we can have a look at it later anyway. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I just want to say I was, I'm really excited to see solutions like this come up in Drupal 8. Um, and I have a ton of questions, but I'm going to limit myself to just one. Okay. Um, and that is, um, you showed uh, examples of taking like a field and then putting into a, um, a spot in, in the pattern. Um, is there a way that you can handle like multi-value fields yeah. where you can then have like wrappers around each yes. each field, uh, you know, number, uh, individual field? Yes, so th that's, that's exactly, so we, we, we don't support it now, so the UI does not support it now, but uh, the architecture uh, has always supported it. So we always thought about this, that would be the final goal and the final use case. So the way the configuration is saved allows for this to happen. Uh, at the moment, you can do it, like for example here, you see you have like two sources to the same destination field. So you have both the post date and the last modified date that goes together in the publication date. And then you have one after the other, right? And you can actually, you know, swap them, you can put one after the other. So you can do a little manipulation already. Uh, but we want to improve this thing here. But this is just a UI effort. I mean, once you have the architecture, this is really a UI effort. What you want to do is that instead of having like the predefined dump there with, with all the things you can do, you can just choose, you know, like, okay, I want this source. Then from this source, I want to use this source plugin and then this destination. And then you have finally the settings on the mapping itself, which are missing now. But the, 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 the configuration schema allows for that, so it's fine. But yeah, it's just, you know, a lot of UI work, which we didn't have time to do, but we, we have to do it. But that's totally possible, yes. It's, it's where we want to go. Uh, Basically. Cool. That, that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for this approach. It's really useful for consuming component libraries. My question is about uh, API. Uh, so when you thought about uh, mapping thing, that uh, patterns is kind of a mapping between regions yes. and data. Yes? Yes. It's pretty the same as layout API working now. So yeah. the good thing that, could be yeah. to use layout API instead of custom uh, pattern API because it's pretty the same. Yes, what do so you think about there is this? a lot of overlap. That's why that's why we see really the you know like we are all going towards the same direction, which is basically describing templates for a, in, in in some sort of formal form that that then the layout system can pick up. Or we can do that, but not all contexts are this, exactly the same. So we still need some uh, tweaks. So you cannot really apply that to everything, you see? But yeah, I mean, uh, it, we, we, have, we have to be careful not to overlap with that. I totally agree with you. Uh, it's, uh, it's something we need to watch closely. Uh, there is a module about the field templating, field layout. I think it's a, an experimental module. And that I need to watch out because probably it's also overlapping here. But yeah, if, if uh, we arrive at the point that, uh, that we can take out the mapping system and replace it with the layout, I mean, I'm all, I'm all in favor for yeah, it, of that's course. Great. It's, yeah, it's Thank where you. we should go. Yeah. We already did it, actually, when we did the layout discovery thing. Uh, we are also like did this kind of operation of removing stuff from UI patterns. Okay. 
Other questions? Thank you, guys.